Scramjet programs refers to research and testing programs for the development of supersonic combustion ramjets, known as scramjets. This list provides a short overview of national and international collaborations, and civilian and military programs. The USA, Russia, India, and China 2014, have succeeded at developing scramjet technologies. Topic. USA's programs Topic. X-15 When the second X-15 aircraft piloted by John B. McKay crashed on Flight 74, it was damaged but survived well enough to be rebuilt. North American Aviation rebuilt it as the X-15A2. Among other things, one of the changes was provisions for a dummy scramjet to test if wind tunnel testing was correct. Unfortunately, on the final flight of the X-15A-2 Flight 188, the shock waves sent out by the scramjet at Mach 6.7 caused extremely intense heating of over 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit 1,480 degrees Celsius. This then drilled into the ventral fin and melted large holes. The plane survived but never flew again. Test data were limited due to the limited flights of the scramjet before the X-15A-2 and the X-15 project on the whole were cancelled. 1. Topic. Scram From 1962 to 1978, the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory APL undertook a classified program declassified in 1993 to develop a family of missiles called SCRAM-8 supersonic combustion ramjet missile. They were intended to fit into the Talos Mk-12 launcher system or the Terrier Mk-10 launcher. Testing of engine modules in a direct connect, and a free jet, facility took place at a variety of Mach numbers and pressures, altitudes. These included Mach 4, 24,000 feet, Mach 5.3, 46,000 feet, Mach 7.8, 67,000 feet, and Mach 10, 88,000 feet. Tests showed that acceptable combustion efficiency was only achieved with over 20% pentaborane B5H9 in MCPD C12H16. Tests with pure pentaborane Hickel showed that a net thrust could be achieved at Mach 7. An accelerative capability equivalent to 11 grams was observed for Mach 5 flight at sea level. Topic. National Aerospace Plane In 1986 United States President Ronald Reagan announced the National Aerospace Plane NASP, program, intended to develop two X-30 aircraft capable of single stage to orbit SSTO, as well as horizontal takeoff and landing from conventional runways. The aircraft was to be a hydrogen-fueled air-breathing space plane, with a low-speed accelerator system to bring the aircraft up to Mach 3, where the main dual-mode scramjet engines ramjet, scramjet, would take over. At the edge of the atmosphere, a rocket was to take over and provide the final energy for orbital insertion. It was based on a classified DARPA research program called Copper Canyon. This research program suggested that Mach 25 might be possible. As the program proceeded it became clear that Mach 17 was probably the limit, whilst the weight penalty and complexity of the skin heat exchanger and other propulsion systems was going to be substantial. 
The program was established by the Secretary of Defense in 1985, and was funded to the end of FY1994, when the decision was made that the $15 billion required to build the 2X30 test craft were excessive. Although the more visible parts of the program were cancelled, NASP provided a large amount of basic research, which flowed into following projects. For example, the NASP Reaction Model 7 for hydrogen combustion in air, 31 reactions, 16 species, is still extensively used where computational power is sufficient not to have to use reduced reaction models. Topic. High shot On July 30, 2002, the University of Queensland's High Shot team and international partners conducted the first ever successful test flight of a scramjet. The team took a unique approach to the problem of accelerating the engine to the necessary speed by using a Terrier Orion sounding rocket to take the aircraft up on a parabolic trajectory to an altitude of 314 kilometers. As the craft re-entered the atmosphere, it dropped to a speed of Mach 7.6. The scramjet engine then started, and it flew at about Mach 7.6 for 6 seconds. 2. This was achieved on a lean budget of just 1.5 million Australian dollars, 1.1 million United States dollars, a tiny fraction of NASA's 250 million United States dollars to develop the X43A. This involved many of the same researchers involved in the University of Queensland report in 1995 of the first development of a scramjet that achieved more thrust than drag 2. On Saturday, March 25, 2006 researchers at the University of Queensland conducted another successful test flight of a high-shot scramjet at the Woomera Test Range in South Australia. The Highshot 3 with its 1,200,000 pounds engine made an apparently successful flight and planned crash landing reaching in the order of 7.6 Mach 3. NASA has partially explained the tremendous difference in cost between the two projects by pointing out that the American vehicle has an engine fully incorporated into an airframe with a full complement of flight control surfaces available. In the second high-shot mission, no net thrust was achieved. The thrust was less than the drag. The high-shot program currently consists of the following tests. High-shot 1 UQ-2D scramjet. Failed launch due to rocket fin puncture by a rock on the landing pad. High-shot 2 UQ-2D scramjet. Successful, July 30, 2002. High Shot 3 7 NASA tests. Cancelled after announcement of manned Mars mission. High Shot 8 now known as High Shot 3 Kinetic 4 Chamber Scramjet. Successful, March 25, 2006, 4. High Shot 9 now known as High Shot IV JAXA launch of UQ-2D scramjet with JAXA hypermixer. Successful, March 30, 2006. High Shot 10 Haikas, DSTO Scramjet. Successful June 15, 2007. Sponsorship for the High Shot Flight Program was obtained from the University of Queensland, Astrotech Space Operations, Defence Evaluation and Research Agency, DARA, now Kinetic, UK, National Aeronautics and Space Agency, NASA, USA, Defence, Science and Technology Organisation, DSTO, Australia, Department of Defence. 
Defence Australia, Department of Industry Science and Resources Australia, the German Aerospace Centre DLR, Germany, Seoul National University Korea, the Australian Research Council, Australian Space Research Institute ASRI, Alessi Technologies Australia, National Aerospace Laboratories NAL, Japan, NQEA Australia, Australian Research and Development Unit ARDU, Australia, the Air Force Office of Scientific Research AFOSR, USA and Luxfer, Australia. High Fire Hypersonic International Flight Research and Experimentation Hi-Fire, is a joint program of the U.S. Department of Defense and Australian DST Group. The purpose of this program is to investigate fundamental hypersonic phenomena and accelerate the development of aerospace vehicle technologies deemed critical to long-range precision strike by using an affordable, accessible, prototype experimentation strategy. HiFire Zero May 7, 2009 First HiFire Hypersonic Test Flight HiFire 1 March 22, 2010 Second HiFire Hypersonic Test Flight HiFire 2 May 1, 2012 Accelerating Velocity Profile Hydrocarbon-Fueled Scramjet High Fire 3 September 13, 2012 Radical Farming Axie Symmetric Hydrogen Fueled Scramjet In 2012 the High Fire program was recognized with the prestigious Von Karman Award by the International Congress of the Aeronautical Sciences. HyperX The $250 million NASA Langley HyperXX 43A effort was an outgrowth of the cancelled National Aerospace Plane NASP program on which NASA was a collaborator. Rather than developing and flying a large, expensive spaceplane with orbital capability, HyperX flew small test vehicles to demonstrate hydrogen fueled scramjet engines. NASA worked with contractors Boeing, Microcraft, and the General Applied Science Laboratory GASL, on the project. NASA's HyperX program is the successor to the National Aerospace Plane NASP, program which was cancelled in November 1994. This program involves flight testing through the construction of the X-43 vehicles. NASA first successfully flew its X-43A scramjet test vehicle on March 27, 2004 an earlier test, on June 2, 2001 went out of control and had to be destroyed. Unlike the University of Queensland's vehicle, it took a horizontal trajectory. After it separated from its mother craft and booster, it briefly achieved a speed of 5,000 miles per hour, 8,000 kilometers per hour, the equivalent of Mach 7, easily breaking the previous speed record for level flight of an air-breathing vehicle. Its engines ran for 11 seconds, and in that time it covered a distance of 15 miles, 24 kilometers. The Guinness Book of Records certified the X-43A's flight as the current aircraft speed record holder on 30 August 2004. The third X-43 flight set a new speed record of 6,600 miles per hour 10,620 kilometers per hour, nearly Mach 10 on 16 November 2004. It was boosted by a modified Pegasus rocket which was launched from a Boeing B-52 at 13,157 meters 43,166 feet. After a free flight where the scramjet operated for about 10 seconds the craft made a planned crash into the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Southern California. The X-43A craft were designed to crash into the ocean without recovery. 
Duct geometry and performance of the X-43 are classified. The NASA Langley, Marshall, and Glenn centers are now all heavily engaged in hypersonic propulsion studies. The Glenn Center is taking leadership on a Mach 4 turbine engine of interest to the USAF. As for the X-43A Hyper X, three follow-on projects are now under consideration. Topic integrated Systems Test of an Air-Breathing Rocket X-43B, a scaled-up version of the X-43A, to be powered by the Integrated Systems Test of an Air-Breathing Rocket I-Star engine. ISTAR will use a hydrocarbon-based liquid rocket mode for initial boost, a ramjet mode for speeds above Mach 2.5, and a scramjet mode for speeds above Mach 5 to take it to maximum speeds of at least Mach 7. A version intended for space launch could then return to rocket mode for final boost into space. ISTAR is based on a proprietary aerojet design called a strutjet, which is currently undergoing wind tunnel testing. NASA's Marshall Space Propulsion Center has introduced an integrated systems test of the air breathing rocket ISTAR program, prompting Pratt and Whitney, Aerojet, and Rocketdyne to join forces for development. Topic. High-tech X-43C, NASA is in discussions with the Air Force on development of a variant of the X-43A that would use the high-tech hydrocarbon-fueled scramjet engine. The U.S. Air Force and Pratt and & Whitney have cooperated on the hypersonic technology high-tech scramjet engine, which has now been demonstrated in a wind tunnel environment. While most scramjet designs to date have used hydrogen fuel, high-tech runs on conventional kerosene-type hydrocarbon fuels, which are much more practical for support of operational vehicles. A full-scale engine is now being built, which will use its own fuel for cooling. Using fuel for engine cooling is nothing new, but the cooling system will also act as a chemical reactor, breaking long-chain hydrocarbons down into short-chain hydrocarbons that burn more rapidly. Topic. HyperX Mach 15 X-43D, a version of the X-43A with a hydrogen-powered scramjet engine with a maximum speed of Mach 15. Topic. Fast On December 10, 2005, Alliant Tech Systems ATK successfully flight tested an air-breathing, liquid JP-10 hydrocarbon fueled scramjet powered free flight vehicle from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility, Wallops Island, Virginia. The flight test was conducted under the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency DARPA, Office of Naval Research ONR, Free Flight Atmospheric Scramjet Test Technique FASTT 5 project. This latest flight was a culmination of a three-year, three-flight program to successfully demonstrate the feasibility of using ground-launched sounding rockets as a low-cost approach to hypersonic flight testing, and represents the world's first flight test of an air-breathing, scramjet-powered vehicle using hydrocarbon fuel. Begun in late 2002, the FASTT project entailed the design and fabrication of three flight vehicles and a ground test engine rig to undergo wind tunnel testing. The first and second payloads were dubbed surrogate payload vehicles and matched closely the scramjet flight article, but lacked the internal flow path and fuel system. 
They were designed as test rounds to validate vehicle subsystems, such as booster stack combination performance, fin sets, payload deployment mechanism, telemetry and trackability, and inlet shroud, before flight testing the more complicated scramjet flow path, which was to undergo proof-of-concept testing in a wind tunnel prior to flight testing. The first surrogate vehicle, SPV-1, was launched aboard an unguided Terrier, improved Orion two-stage solid rocket motor stack from Wallops Island on October 18, 2003, approximately 12 months after program initiation. This had the exact outer mold line of the eventual shrouded scramjet payload and contained full onboard instrumentation and telemetry suites. The vehicle was boosted to approximately 4,600 feet per second, 1,400 meters per second, and 52,000 feet, 16,000 meters altitude, where it was deployed to free flight, deployed its shroud at high dynamic pressure, and flew an unpowered trajectory to splashdown. All onboard subsystems worked flawlessly. The boost stage however inserted the payload at lower than desired flight speed, altitude, and flight path angle. The second surrogate vehicle, SPV-2 was launched aboard the identical booster stack from Wallops Island on April 16, 2004, approximately six months after the first launch. After making slight trajectory corrections to account for launch rail effects, higher than anticipated drag, and actual booster performance, the payload was inserted nominally above 5,200 feet per second, 1,600 meters per second, and 61,000 feet, 19,000 meters altitude. The full complement of subsystems were again proven out in flight on this successful flight test. The results of these two flight tests are summarized in a technical paper AIAA 20053297, presented at the 13th International Space Planes and Hypersonics Systems and Technologies Conference C6 in Capua, Italy. The ground test engine hardware was fabricated over 18 months and underwent a four-month engine validation testing program in the ATK GASL Freejet Wind Tunnel Complex Leg 6, located in Rinconcoma, New York. Ignition, fuel throttling, and engine operation were wrung out over a range of expected flight conditions. After a delay of two months to modify flight hardware based on ground test findings, the first powered vehicle, FFV-1, was launched without incident, propelled to speeds of 5,300 feet per second, 1,600 meters per second, at 63,000 feet, 19,000 meters altitude, roughly Mach 5.5. Over 140 inlet, combustor, and vehicle outer mold line pressure, temperatures, and vehicle accelerations as well as fuel pressure, timing feedback, and power systems monitoring were recorded. The vehicle executed the prescribed test sequences flawlessly for 15 seconds, before continuing on to splash down into the Atlantic Ocean. Further details can be found in the technical paper AIAA 20068119, presented at the 14th International Space Planes and Hypersonics Systems and Technologies Conference, in Canberra, Australia. Alliant Tech Systems Inc. ATK GASL division led the contractor team for the FASTT project, developed and integrated the scramjet vehicle, and acted as mission managers for the three flights. Launch vehicle integration and processing was performed by Rocket Support Services formerly DTI Associates, Glen Burnie, Maryland. The flight shroud was developed by Systema Technologies, Inc., Bothell, Washington. Electrical systems, telemetry and instrumentation was handled by the NASA Sounding Rocket Office Contract NSROC. Flight test support was provided by the NASA Wallops Flight Facility 
Committee, and technical support was provided by the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, Baltimore, Maryland. GASL previously built and integrated the engine flow paths and fuel systems for the 3X43A flight vehicles, working closely with air framer and systems integrator Boeing, NASA Langley, and NASA Dryden on the successful HyperX program. Topic. Promethe. Several scramjet designs are now under investigation with Russian assistance. One of these options or a combination of them will be selected by ONERA, the French Aerospace Research Agency, with the EADS conglomerate providing technical backup. The notional immediate goal of the study is to produce a hypersonic air-to-surface missile named Promethe which would be about 6 meters 20 feet long and weigh 1,700 kilograms 3,750 pounds. GASL projectile At a test facility at Arnold Air Force Base in the U.S. state of Tennessee, the General Applied Science Laboratory GASL, fired a projectile equipped with a hydrocarbon-powered scramjet engine from a large gun. On July 26, 2001, the 4-inch wide projectile covered a distance of 260 feet 79 meters in 30 milliseconds roughly 5,900 miles per hour or 9,500 kilometers per hour. The projectile is supposedly a model for a missile design. Many do not consider this to be a scramjet. Flight as the test took place near ground level. However, the test environment was described as being very realistic. Topic. Falcon DARPA The final target of the Falcon program is a hypersonic vehicle that will be using scramjet technology. Topic. HYV High Five High V is a scramjet experiment to obtain and compare ground test and flight test supersonic combustion data. The general goal of the project is to validate wind tunnel test results that will eventually be used to develop computational codes. The primary investigators are the University of Virginia, Virginia Tech, and Alliant Tech Systems, and the test will be launched on a Terrier Orion sounding rocket from NASA's Wallops Island site. Topic Boeing X-51 The Boeing X-51 is a scramjet demonstration aircraft for hypersonic Mach 7, around 8,050 km per hour flight testing. The X-51 Waverider program is a consortium of the U.S. Air Force, DARPA, NASA, Boeing and Pratt & Whitney Rocketdyne. The program is managed by the Propulsion Directorate within the United States Air Force Research Laboratory AFRL. The X-51 is a descendant of earlier efforts including the Advanced Rapid Response Missile Demonstrator and the liquid hydrocarbon-fueled scramjet engine developed under the USAF's high-tech program. The first free flight of the X-51 took place in May 2010. On 1 May 2013, the X-51 performed its first fully successful flight test, flying for 240 seconds until running out of fuel. This test was the longest air-breathing hypersonic flight. This test signified the completion of the program. Topic. Other programs Topic. India 
The Tiruvananthapuram-based Vikram Sarabhai Space Center VSSC of the Indian Space Research Organization ISRO designed and ground-tested a scramjet in 2005. A press release stated that stable supersonic combustion was demonstrated in ground testing for nearly seven seconds with an inlet Mach number of 6. In 2010, a flight test of Advanced Technology Vehicle ATVD01 with a passive scramjet engine combustor module was conducted. It was a suborbital ballistic trajectory-based experiment using a two-stage RH-560 sounding rocket. The BrahMos-2 cruise missile is expected to be tested by 2017. The HSTD-V is a technology demonstrator under development by the DRDO. It has been ground-tested at hypersonic speeds for 20 seconds. On August 28, 2016, ISRO successfully tested its scramjet engine on second developmental flight of its advanced technology vehicle ATVD02. Topic: <laughs> China. On 9 January 2014 U.S. surveillance satellites observed an object flying at a speed of between Mach 5 and Mach 10 with an altitude of around 100 km. Following Chinese statements the preliminary Pentagon designation for this object is Wu-14. In the first phase this unmanned vehicle was brought to its operating height and speed by a military long-range missile. In August 2015, it was reported that a Chinese researcher had been awarded for the successful development and test flight of a new scramjet engine, the first of its kind in China. This would make China the third country in the world, after Russia and the United States, to have successfully test flown a scramjet. A new near hypersonic drone, with a variable cycle turbo ramjet engine, has also been flown. It is reportedly the fastest air breathing recoverable vehicle in the world. It was later revealed that the first flight of a Waverider like scramjet powered vehicle occurred in 2011, with flight tests completed by 2014. Topic. Germany The Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft has founded Research Training Group 1095-7. Research purposes are the aero-thermodynamic design and development of a scramjet demonstrator. There is no official name for the demonstrator yet. The project includes basic research to gain a better understanding of supersonic fuel mixing and combustion, aerodynamic effects, material sciences and issues in system design. The project involves the University of Stuttgart, Technical University of Munich, RWTH Aachen and the German Aerospace Center. Topic. Russia The first working scramjet in the world, GLL Kolod, flew on 28 November 1991, reaching a speed of Mach 5.8. However, the collapse of the Soviet Union stopped the funding of the project. After NASA's NASP program was cut, American scientists began to look at adopting available Russian technology as a less expensive alternative to developing hypersonic flight. On November 17, 1992, Russian scientists with some additional French support successfully launched a scramjet engine named Kolod in Kazakhstan 6. From 1994 to 1998 NASA worked with the Russian Central Institute of Aviation Motors CIAM to test a dual-mode scramjet engine and transfer technology and experience to the West. Four tests took place, reaching Mach numbers of 5.5, 5.35, 5.8, and 6.5. 
The final test took place aboard a modified SA-5 surface-to-air missile launched from the Sarishagan test range in the Republic of Kazakhstan on 12 February 1998. According to CIAM telemetry data, the first ignition attempt of the scramjet was unsuccessful, but after 10 seconds the engine was started and the experimental system flew 77s with good performance, up until the planned SA-5 missile self-destruction according to NASA, no net thrust was achieved. Some sources in the Russian military have said that a hypersonic Mach 10 to Mach 15 maneuverable ICBM warhead was tested. The new GLLI GLA system was expected to fly in 2009. Topic: <laughs> Brazil The 14X is a Brazilian hypersonic aircraft, named in tribute to the 14 bis of Alberto Santos Dumont. This aircraft is equipped with a scramjet engine, which is integrated into the fuselage and has no moving parts. The operating principle is that, during flight, the air is compressed by the geometry and speed of the vehicle and directed to the engine at the bottom of the aircraft. Hydrogen is used as the fuel. The vehicle will utilize the Waverider concept. Topic. See also HOTOL Jet engine Single stage to orbit Skylon spacecraft